everybody and welcome back to my channel. In this video, which is uh, part two of the Foggy Day in Otley, I went out at night to get photos in the mist. You know, taking pictures in these conditions and done correctly will produce very moody atmospheric images. So it's well worth trying. But before we get into the video, a few essential things you need to understand first. Now, to some film shooters, especially those that are not confident uh, to shoot film at night, thinking it's all a, a little daunting to work with film this way, let me tell you it's not. With a little experience and experimentation, it's easy. And in uh, many ways better than uh, digital, as film can handle the dynamic range much better per shot and is uh, way more tolerant to overexposure, especially in the highlights, never blowing them and always looking uh, natural. Using film as your medium for capture, for me, is broken down into two main areas. Uh, film type and careful thought in the type of developers play a big part in the uh, process. So first of all, let's talk about film choice. I think from my experience that uh, Fuji Across, or it's better known as Fuji Across 2 these days, is way above any other film out there for uh, long exposure work. It doesn't suffer from film's reciprocity failure up to two minutes. After that time, you simply double the exposure time. So as an example, the longest exposure in this video was 12 minutes using uh, Fuji Across. Now, if I had uh, used, let's say, Kodak Tri-X, the 12 minutes with reciprocity time added would have been 2 hours 36 minutes. Uh, another example, let's look at the modern Kodak uh, T-Max 400. Again, adding the failure time, an exposure of 34 minutes would have been required. A lot better than the uh, Tri-X, uh, but still a long time. These times, compared to Fuji Across, are massive. And you know, they save you having to uh, be standing about in the dark, often uh, on cold nights, uh, keeping exposure times uh, to the minimum. So for me, Across is a film of choice uh, when I take pictures at night. Now, the second thing to take into consideration is the type of developer you're going to use. Film is only as good as the uh, developer. If you develop badly or use the wrong type of developer, the, the uh, results will lack luster and be disappointing. Avoid high contrast developers as they're not a good choice uh, for night photography. The contrast at uh, night is inherently high, so development has to be softer. The old adage still holds true in that you expose for the shadows and develop for the highlights. You can use Kodak HC110 at high at dilutions as a semi-stand. That will keep the highlight density from uh, going uncontrollable. And there are other developers that work the same way. However, the best all-round developer I've used is Pyrocat HD. Uh, it's not as easy to get hold of but with care can be mixed up uh, to work in solutions from raw uh, chemicals. I'll leave a link below to a, a resource page telling you all about it. It tells you the chemicals needed to make it and the development times for given films are all there for you to study. It's a two-part uh, tanning semi-compensating developer. Uh, it's extremely economical in use and it produces negatives assuming that you get the exposure times correct or thereabouts, that have an excellent shadow and highlight detail. Its uh, high accutance also produces uh, sharp images. There are lots of articles about it on the net for you to study and get an understanding of what it uh, can do. With that out of the way, what else do you need? Well, any camera can be used as long as you can lock the lens uh, open with a cable release. You know, Holger's produced great night images and it do not get much cheaper than that. You'll need a handheld light meter that can work at low EV settings, that, that's uh, exposure value settings, uh, especially when you, you, you first try night photography. A uh, tripod, uh, LED torch and uh, a piece of uh, matte black card in case you have to pause the exposure and cover the lens uh, during the exposure time. You'll pause the exposure when, say, a car comes into the frame, pause the exposure. When the car's gone, remove it and, and uh, restart the time. So a piece of black card's very handy. 
Assuming you're going to try a cross as your film choice, you'll not need film reciprocity charts, and that's it. The best knowledge is gained from hands-on experience. Once you've been out a few times using the same film and developer, which I would recommend to create a consistent workflow, you will in no time be able to guesstimate exposure times. The, the key to this is keeping notes to refer back to from previous outings. You'll find in general, times will be very similar in uh, most situations. Always uh, be generous with exposure times. Use the best type of developer uh, to suit the scene and you're virtually guaranteed to be successful with uh, uh, shooting film at night. So, on with the video and I will explain uh, the way I work uh, taking pictures at night. Now this is the first image I took using my Rolifrax uh, 3.5F. It was in a local churchyard, no, ple no, no better place to get a moody image uh, in fog as a, a graveyard. With the camera on the tripod at waist level, I set the camera to bulb, the aperture to f5.7. Now you're best to try and find a light source in front of you, uh, usually street lamps. Try to shield them partially with something in the composition. Now in this case, it was the tree. As you can see, the camera is set up on the tripod, uh, the composition set, so where do I uh, meter the scene? Well in this, I use the meter in incident light reading mo mode. I place the meter facing the camera and walk slowly into the darkest area towards the camera until the meter gave me an EU warning. In other words, the exposure value is so low it cannot read any light. That's the exposure I'm going to use. In this case, it was 4 minutes at f5.7. Because it was over 2 minute time, I doubled uh, the exposure to 8 minutes. Now, I knew from experience the headstones in deep shade would just record as black with no detail. This is where the torch shirt becomes a tool. During the exposure, I pointed the torch at the area for around 90 seconds during the exposure, keeping it moving all the time. This will keep the area dark but allow shadow detail uh, to be uh, revealed, as you can see here. During the uh, eight minute exposure, I took notes of times and apertures, plus uh, a phone capture of the scene. And this is the finished image. Now this is the second exposure. Now I felt the first composition was a little uh, low so I took another image at head height to show more of the top of the headstones. Uh, it was the same exposure. This is the third exposure. Uh, in this picture, uh, it was just to the side of the, the first image that I took. And to my eyes, it was slightly brighter, uh, a slightly brighter scene. To confirm that, I did uh, the same type of reading as the first exposure, and it confirmed that. So I reduced the exposure time to 5 minutes at f5.7, and this is the image. Now this is the fourth uh, exposure. Uh, for this picture I just turned around and the lighting was pretty similar to the previous picture. Maybe a tad brighter, so the exposure uh, given was 4 minutes at f5.7. Keeping in mind the light reading was 2 minutes, so I uh, doubled it. Now this is the fifth exposure. From there, uh, I walked down the path onto the main street in Otley. And I liked the light over the arcade uh, shopping area. The main light was from the street lamp and in uh, some ways, I wish I had uh, included that in the composition. Anyway, 
I set the camera up and pointed the roller flex upward. I could see that the, this picture needed to be cropped for the uh, composition I had in mind. I took a light reading in the doorway of the arcade. This told me 45 seconds at f11. Now, from previous uh, excursions, and this is why notes are important uh, at night, the time just didn't seem long enough, so I simply doubled that time to 90 seconds. This gave me the shadow detail, and uh, I knew that Pyrocat HD would deal with the highlight uh, density uh, going too far. Uh, and this is the uh, finished picture. Now this is the sixth uh, exposure. This is the market square in Otley. I got the camera set up lower down to accentuate the path. The light reading, again pointing back uh, towards the camera in incident mode, was indicating that the exposure was the same as the previous image. I used the uh, same exposure of 90 seconds at f11. And now, after seeing the negative, I think an extra minute would have uh, been preferred being as it was uh, slightly underexposed. This is where film's latitude saved the day. I still had a, a, work, a workable negative to play with. Uh, you, cannot, you, know, you can't get them all perfect, but this goes in my notebook for uh, future reference. It still, uh, I think, made a, a nice moody image though. Now this is exposure se uh, 7. Uh, from this point I noticed a, a covered walkway with iron railings again in the market square or leading away from the market square. Now I like the light shining on the slate path through the railings. Now this was a, a tricky one. I could not uh, really get an exposure time I felt comfortable with. They all seemed to be a little uh, short. So I referred to it to the first image and uh, its time. And knowing this was a darker scene, I added 4 minutes uh, to give me a total time of 12 minutes at f5.7. And you know the exposure was spot on. I was well chuffed with the negative and the finished uh, picture. Again in the market square. I like the empty bench with the signpost and plus the, the old pub in the background. As you can see, the uh, pub was closed due to the COVID restrictions. There were lots of light there, so I took a reading in the shaded area uh, of the signpost and uh, went with that metered uh, reading, which uh, gave me uh, 25 seconds at F8. Again, uh, another correct exposure. This is the ninth exposure, completely ruined as I knocked the tripod during the exposure. Now, the tenth ex uh, exposure is the same as the ninth. Uh, however, a car came into the composition towards me uh, with its uh, headlights blazing. So I paused the time with the black card over the lens, restarted it when the car had gone. Uh, this was the worst exposure for, from the night's uh, outing. You know, I'm not uh, really good at multitasking and somehow with the car uh, interrupting the exposure, I stopped it too soon. But again, the film's lassitude uh, saved the day. But I wish I had uh, more density in the negative. Although I think it does work quite well and the exposure time was 4 minutes at F11. It should have been round about 8 minutes. This is exposure 11, uh, there's nothing on it. I took a, a, a blank shot. I do hate it when I do that. And this is the 12th and last exposure. I was walking down the street and the light rays from the street, uh, street lamp that looked amazing. So I set the camera up at waist level. I took the exposure uh, in the darkest area I could get a reading 
and, and went with that. It was 90 seconds at F8. A car came up towards me, lights blazing, so I covered the lens, paused the exposure. When the car went, removed the car, restarted the exposure, and it turned out spot on. A good end to a, a great evening's uh, outing. So that's the end of the uh, video uh, tutorial. I hope you found it helpful and uh, picked some tips up uh, from uh, some of the things that, that I've shown you. And you can see by the pictures that I, uh, I took that uh, it's not rocket science. Uh, with the right equipment, it's easy to use film at night. Right, this is the final part of the video. I've chosen a picture from the video which I'm going to offer on sale for auction on eBay and this is to help uh, support my channel. Anything that I get goes back into buying uh, chemicals and film to help me keep uh, creating this uh, content. Right, that's the, uh, the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and picked some uh, tips up on the way regarding night photography. Uh, if you've never tried night photography with film, I would uh, highly recommend you have a go, especially on um, you know foggy, misty evenings where you get these lovely atmospheric uh, photographs. Uh, it's not as difficult as you think. In fact, it's quite easy to do once you get the hang of it. Anyway, this is the print that I'm selling uh, on auction on eBay. I'll leave a link in the description to that auction. And any funds that I receive from the sale of the print goes back into buying uh, uh, film and uh, chemicals to help me uh, uh, continue to create this content. The actual picture itself is uh, of the old workers' cottages that were built to house the workers who worked in the mills in and around Otley uh, many years ago. You can see the cottages slowly flip, fade away uh, into the mist um, down the road and then we've got the lamp casting these uh, these light rays which obviously is caused by the fog and I can tell you that this print is very faithful to the, the scene uh, that I took that night I haven't over edited it and put all these light rays in it's exactly as it as it was the actual print size is 12 by 12 it's printed on Epson uh, cold press bright paper which is a, a lovely uh, matte paper it has a, a, a lovely uh, delicate texture to it and I printed it with a, a slight warm tone which I do to most of my prints because I just feel that it adds a, a certain character to the pictures. The picture will come uh, uh, signed and titled and I'll leave a, a white border all the way around the picture and that will help when you come to mount uh, before you frame the picture. So as I say I'll leave a, a link below uh, to the auction and uh, if you'd like to see this uh, unique print hanging on your wall please put a bid in. So that, that is the end of the video. Um, I hope you enjoyed the content and, uh, and found it helpful. If you have any messages regarding uh, night photography please leave uh, a message below and I'll uh, get back to you. If you like the video please give me a like uh, and better still uh, subscribe to my channel. Finally, I'd just like to say thank you to all those that have bought prints in the past and those that have made uh, donations to my channel. It really does help uh, in, me, in buying film and chemicals as <laughs> these things seem to be always going up in, uh, in price. So thank you for watching and I'll uh, see you in the next video.